Praise your name and to give you thanks for this opportunity. Lord, we no longer take meeting together for worship uh, for granted, but we realize that it's indeed a blessing and we thank you for it. Lord, as we've come this morning, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be in our midst. We, we just ask that we would sense your presence in this place and that each one that is listening or is here would be encouraged, uplifted, and strengthened. And we give you praise for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Kids, yeah. Kids, come on up. Sorry. You too, Joel. What's up? What did I miss? What? What did I, what did I do? Have a seat, guys. One of the kids. No, well, fair enough. Yeah, come on up here, guys. Come on up here. We're going to sing a song with these guys. Then we're going to do a memory verse. Memory, memory verse. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. All right. Should we sing the song first? Okay, we're going to do, what's the song? This Little Light of Mine we're going to sing together. All right, have a seat. Have a seat. We're going to sing This Little Light of Mine. Ready? Apparently. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So no! without looking at the words. Who remembers the Bible verse? Me. We'll see if we can get Clopper to help us with that. Okay, what is it? What's the Bible verse? Say it again. The Lord is my strength and my shield. That's right. Now you remember it? Is that what happened? Oh. Well, we'll see if we can get Clopper to help us remember it. Okay, go ahead. Strength and my shield. Yeah, I was pretty close. We just need Clopper to show up and help us. We'll see if Clopper can help us. What are you pointing at? There's no Clopper back there. I don't know where Clopper is on the screen. There he is. You can see him here, too. You can see him right there. You can see him right there. Hello. Look, Clopper is out standing in his field again. Oh, wow. Good morning. I can't quite hear you, Clopper. Somebody needs to make you louder. Hello. 
Hello. Way louder. Yeehaw. Way louder. Testing. One, yeah. two, three. Oh, we can Yeehaw. see you now. No, yeah, he's on the screen too, right there. Yeehaw. Yeah. So does anybody have a question for Clopper? Do you want to ask Clopper a question? What do you want to ask? Okay. okay. Hello. All right, can I think you hear we can hear now? you now. Okay, good. All right. Sorry, sorry, sit down, guys. You can see him there too. He's right there. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Okay. We got a question for Clopper. Somebody had a question. What, what was your question? Hello. Lord is my strength and my shield. Very oh, good. Oh, good job. Did you have a question for Clopper? Very good. Okay, does anybody oh, have a question job, for Clopper? Or is it question and answer? Should we ask questions? Do you know what the question is? What's it? Oh, strength in my shield. <laughs> Very good. Does anybody want to ask Clopper what his favorite color is? No? What should we ask him? Should we, should we ask him if he's got a girlfriend? No. You think Clopper's got a girlfriend? He might even have a wife and ten kids for all we know. No. Well, Clopper, are you married? No. Oh, okay. My career gets in the way. What's that? My career gets in the way. Oh, your career. Yeah, that's right. Very good. So the boys and girls are going to be heading downstairs again. We're going to pray with the boys and girls. Okay, right, that's good. great. Thank you, God, for our boys and girls. And as they go down to Sunday school or go back and sit with their parents, depending on their age, as to Joe bless them. Amen. Amen. Right. So you, some of you guys go back to mommy and daddy. Okay, bye, guys. Okay, yeah, see ya. Bye. Well, good morning, everyone. If you'd like to follow along with me, I'd just like to uh, highlight some of the announcements that you'll find in the bulletin. And we'll begin today with birthdays. John Fair, John and Anne. Do I, I don't see them here, so if you see John today, wish him a happy birthday. No, it's an anniversary, isn't it? No, it's his birthday here. Right here. Well, I got birthday here. <laughs> okay, and Kirsty Hogan. Happy birthday, Kirsty. And Doreen Melhoff, oh, yeah. happy birthday as well. And, and for anniversaries today, it's Orville and Dorothy Stormer, and it's their 70th. It's uh, very significant, so if you have opportunity to send best wishes to them and congratulate them, please do so. Uh, today, there's going to be a service at the Prairie View Lodge at 3 p.m. this afternoon. If you'd like to come out for that or help with that, that would be awesome. So just keep that in mind. Also, uh, Monday's prayer meeting at 7 p.m. Keep that in mind and participate if you possibly can. And the church council meeting will also be at 7 p.m. Uh, the coffee fellowships at the church this week, Tuesday and Thursday mornings in the faith and fellowship room. And uh, just come through the office door if you're participating in that. <clears throat> the care groups are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week, with the, the Girls' Gospel Club being Tuesday evening. The 20-something group is Thursday evening. Uh, fall supper tickets are on sale and available from the church office. If you want to get in on that, uh, please stop by the office or talk to Penny or Joel, and we'll make sure that you get some tickets in advance. Uh, we have takeout meals that will also be available, and... Uh, if the rules change and for some reason we're not able to have it in here, then we will do something that we did uh, similar to last year where we'll have the meal as a drive through once again this year. But we're sure hoping that we can meet together and enjoy the, the time of fellowship and food together here in the church. So keep that in mind and maybe even just uh, pray about that and ask the Lord to guide us in that. We need some posters hung around town to advertise for the supper, and if you could help out with that, we'd sure appreciate your help. Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes are available. Please bring your filled shoeboxes to the church by November the 14th, so by the middle of November. November the 14th, we need the boxes filled and available for shipping. 
Our ministry of the month for October is Joe's place in Moose Jaw. So keep that in mind. And October is also Pastor Appreciation Month. Do we have a video on Joe's place? I'm hearing nothing. Oh, okay, it's coming. Then let's, let's just watch that video. My name is Joe Duick, and I'm the founder and director of Joe's Place Youth Centre. And first and foremost, I just want to thank you guys for your years of generosity and support. It feels so great to know that we have you guys behind us. For the last 25 years, Joe's Place has offered the youth of Moosja a safe place to hang out without the negative impact of drugs or alcohol. Our mission at Joe's Place is to make a difference in Moosja by helping youth reach their full and God-given potential. Well, that mission got a little trickier this year, didn't it? When this pandemic first started, we had to ask ourselves, was the youth's mental health and spiritual well-being worth all the extra work it was going to take to deliver our program safely and within the regulations? Well, the answer to that was an easy and resounding yes. So we've worked full-time since the beginning of the pandemic to offer youth hope in the midst of these trying times. So we immediately invented the Isolation Olympics, a schedule of online contests and competitions with some really great prizes. And we were super impressed with all the talented entries, photography and dance, music, fort building, and so much more. We delivered art kits and ukuleles to our youth, and we got to see some really amazing talent in those ways. We also had our Childhood Heroes on Main Street event, which was a huge success with cars lined up all the way down Main Street. We also got approval to run a mini D-Day paintball fundraiser. But throughout this time, I think one of the most important things we did was to set up a private Discord server to check up on our youth daily. And we have over 180 youth on that right now. And I was so proud of my staff and volunteers as they did their best to encourage youth who were starting to sound down and depressed. And believe me, there was a lot of that. Once Saskatchewan started to open, we moved to socially distanced outdoor adventures in our beautiful local parks. We had photography walks, fishing, hiking, biking, kayaking, canoeing, and we also went paintballing lots, did a beach day, and we even went horseback riding. On Tuesdays, we were able to meet in Crescent Park in socially distanced circles, thanks to Family Pizza, who donated individual pizzas all summer long. Now we're running highly supervised and highly sanitized indoor programs with youth socially distanced and pre-registered for one of our four weekly evening programs. We've got our Tuesday dinner and a movie, Wednesday work bee, and two weekend hangout nights with five different activity areas to sign up for. Well, obviously we had to cancel our traditional voltage. So we planned a mini voltage in the May Wilson Theater with a live band and a voltage movie. And we also had to cancel that. So instead, we ran a micro voltage in Joe's place for the 30 youth who worked on the voltage movie. And it was still a really fun way to ring in the new year. It's been a lot of hard work, sending in proposals to the appropriate authorities to ensure that we're running everything safely and within the guidelines. But all that hard work, totally worth it. Just to see the joy it brings to these youth as they have some source of hope in an often dreary week. With so many things cancelled, we know that these youth just need something to look forward to in these dark times. And as Kyle's article in the newsletter says, a mom came up to him during his morning exercise session and said, I'm very thankful for Joe's Place. Everything fun that my child was able to do this summer was through Joe's Place. But even more than the fun and the joy and the temporary hope, we're so excited for these youth to comprehend the love and the eternal hope that comes from Jesus. Please pray with us that we can continue to be there for the youth of this city that have lost so much. It is truly our desire that in the midst of so much loss, they might actually find the most important thing they could ever find, peace and hope in the arms of a loving God. Please pray with us to that end, and thank you once again for all of your support. To see some really amazing talent in those ways. An awesome ministry, and uh, please keep them in prayer. I know they're not right here in Swift Current, but they are doing an awesome job in the city of Moose I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with them, and, and uh, we do need to keep them in prayer. They're, they're uh, touching lives.
and having an impact in the community. All right, uh, for our scripture reading this morning, if you'd like to follow along with me, it's from Psalm 119, and we're reading verses 49 through 72 today. So starting at verse 49 of Psalm 119. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. The arrogant mock me unmercifully, but I do not turn from your law. I remember, Lord, your ancient laws, and I find comfort in them. Indignation drips me because of the wicked, who have forsaken your law. Your decrees are the theme of my song wherever I go, or wherever I lodge. In the night, Lord, I remember your name, that I may keep your law. This has been my practice. I obey your precepts. You are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your faith with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. I, have, I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your law. At midnight I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. The earth is filled with your love, Lord. Teach me your decrees. Do good to your servant according to your word, Lord. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Amen. All right, I'd just like to remind you of our uh, options for tithing today. And are we taking the offering in-house? Okay, we're not taking the offering in-house. So just a reminder that, that you can drop it off in the box in the foyer. You can drop it off on, on your way out of, out of the sanctuary today in the plate there provided. Or you can drop it off at the office or online. So uh, there are several different ways of giving, and, and we just... Uh, want to remind you of that. Okay. Uh, it's time to come before the Lord with our prayer requests. So I invite you to join me in that. And uh, let's just bow together as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're an awesome and mighty God. We thank you, Lord, that your love is so deep for each one of us. And Father, if there are any here that do not yet know you, I ask that they would not hesitate in turning to you and, and asking you to be the Lord and Savior of their lives. Father, there's great joy in serving you. There's great joy in knowing you, as we've even just read in the Psalms. And uh, Lord, during these times of people being so unsure of the future and what's happening, they need a hope, and that hope is in you, Lord. So may we, as your children, as believers, in the living God. May we turn others to you and invite others to come to that living hope. Father, thank you so much for it. Thank you that you are a God that heals. And Father, there are many in our midst that need your touch today. Uh, I think of uh, Judy who is facing surgery tomorrow. And Lord, it's a, it's a major surgery and with that there's always fears. And So Lord, we pray that you would just give her peace. We ask that you would give protection over her, that you would guide and direct the doctors and nurses as they work with her. And Lord, we also ask for uh, a complete and full recovery. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, uh, for Louise Ginter and Sammy and Sifi and Jackie 
for Pat, for Eldon, for Larry, for the Stormers, and for Curtis. Lord, we thank you for each one of these people, and each one of them are needing a touch from you, either physically or mentally or both. And so, God, we lift them up before you now. We ask that you would fill their hearts and their minds with your peace. And, uh, Father, just we know that you have already begun to work in each one of these situations, and we give you thanks for that. We thank you, Lord, for our missionaries, Tim and Kelly Hutton, for, Nance, for Paddy Nacho, for Bill and Janice Dick. And, Lord, during these times, it must be especially hard being a missionary as they're so limited as to what they can do and, and uh, where they can go. But, Father, you have a plan and a purpose for each one. And as they trust in you, we ask that you would continue to provide protection for them. We ask that you would show them the way and the path that they should take. And, Lord, we ask that they would uh, be able to see fruit for the work that they're doing. And we give you thanks for that. Thank you for our Teen Challenge student, Gary, and also, also for our Compassion and World Vision children, Amanus and Andrian and Reem. Lord, we thank you that we can be in each of these lives, and we thank you that we can not only support them financially, but that we can support them in prayer. And Lord, so we do that. We ask that you would uh, just raise these individuals up to be good and godly people. And we just ask that you would make a difference in their lives, in their family, and in their community. And we thank you for that. Lord, we pray for our government and our situation here. And Father, so often we just seem to lose hope. But Lord, especially during these times, we turn to you and we ask for your guidance and direction. We thank you that you are working even though we don't see it. And even this very week, Lord, we just pray that you would uh, show us and that you would just pour out your spirit and allow people to come to see what you are doing. Father, we pray for the First United Church this morning and for, Lord, each church in our community. We thank you for the ministry that they have and we just ask that they would be uh, about your business and that it would make a difference both here and abroad. Lord, thank you for our time together. We ask your blessing upon the remainder of our service and upon Pastor Joel as he comes and speaks. Father, just uh, speak through him today and may we be encouraged and we give you thanks for all of this. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. I want to say thanks to Jake. I don't know if you saw Jake up here. here. On monitor four, Kyle, put my uh, lapel mic loud on monitor four because so, they can't hear back there. And we'll get it so that you can hear me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Because you've got to pay attention to the sermon, especially one of you. I won't tell you which one it is. Just kidding. Anyways, well, Jake, thanks for coming and joining us today. We appreciate that. And uh, Jake doesn't get up and down the stairs very easy. That's why he's sitting back there. But we appreciate that, him and joining us as well. I can, get, I can put this down. You can, you can mute that. There we go. All right. Put this mic and monitor for. There we go. Helps if I turn it on, doesn't it? So for all the people I said good morning to you that you didn't hear me, good morning. Wendy, Jennifer, Dave and Carol, Sylvan Lakers, and, and Miko and, 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 and the gang, and Stanix, good morning. Uh, I'm, <sighs> Daphne and Jacqueline and Norvin. <laughs> Sorry, Miko has three names, three nicknames. I don't know. I don't know if any of them are real. All right, anyways. Uh, if you don't have your communion, go ahead and grab it just real quick while we're 
Did you guys get your communions? Okay, good. All right. If you need one, we'll, uh, we'll just go get it. We'll do the altar call at the same time. <laughs> so here's a true story. This belt I'm wearing, which you can't see, my wife brought it back from Bolivia for me. And when she brought it back, I said, Honey, how big do you think I am? This thing is massive. And now I'm on the second last hole. This, uh, what year was that trip? 2012? Was it 12? So don't tell me that how many years ago. So yeah, so, so just FYI, I'm down on the second, now I'm on the second last notch. So when he first, first bought it, I was like, this thing's way too big. I can wrap it around me twice. <laughs> too much schmont fat. All right, hey, go to Galatians chapter 5 in your Bibles. We're going to be going continuing that today. Am I missing anything else I'm supposed to announce? Oh yeah, coffee times will be here. If the weather continues nice, our coffee times are going to be in the back parking lot because it's really nice. So we're going to do that in the back parking lot or back there. So, And uh, someone bring donuts. That's all I can say. And uh, yeah, so let's do that for Tuesdays and Thursdays for the time being. And uh, so as, you, as we've been going through Galatians, it's been a lot of just complaining, right? I mean, let's just face it. It's been a lot of complaining. It's been a lot of arguing. As Paul addresses these, these guys that want to turn the church into a, a legalistic in, uh, enterprise, which is not good. So he's going to wrap up, kind of, this whole thing about needing to avoid falling into the trap of legalism. He's going to wrap that up today. And then we're going to go into a couple of uh, really important sections uh, when we're talking about the fruit of sin and then also the fruit of the Spirit. But that's going to be in the coming weeks. Uh, but we're going to wrap up the get off my lawn part. And it gets particularly nasty today. <laughs> it gets... Uh, did you put my voice in monitor for it? this one? Is there, uh, Jack, can you hear me now? How about now? Is that better? Okay, good. Thanks, Kyle. All right. So we wrapped up last, uh, last, last Sunday with uh, this part of the passage, which was... Oh, I just did that. There's one tiny spot on the entire screen I can hit that would do that, and I hit it. Uh, we wrapped up last week with the beginning of the end of the passage, which we're talking about today, which is this whole idea of, of you need to be set free to be set free. I know that's kind of a weird concept. But this is where we finished up last week. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Uh, and again, the, 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 it's almost like saying, it's for money that I gave you money. Or it is for happiness that I made you happy. It, it's, it's kind of a weird phrase. But the whole point of him saying is, listen, when Christ set you free, he set you free so that you could be free. <laughs> eh? I know it sounds weird, but he, what happens is, is these people were set free by Christ, and then they went back into being slaves or being trapped. Uh, and so he, Paul just wants to remind guys, when you were set free, it was so that you would be free. So guess what his main point is? Be free. He says, stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of Slavery, okay. Now, again, as I mentioned before, he's talking to one group of people, that's the Galatian church, knowing full well that the Judaizers, the Jewish legalistic Christians, are listening, right? So he's talking to the, the Galatians, who probably mostly were Greeks or, or Gentiles, knowing full well that the Jewish, the Judaizers are listening, and he's saying, he's talking to both of them at the same time even though he's only addressing one of them. He says, listen, stand firm them and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. For the Gentiles, their slavery was to their false religions. Their slavery was to their uh, false religions and idols and false gods. And they were slaves to that system. That system included all those special holidays, all those special things they needed to do all the time to 
hopefully get on the good side of their, of their gods, you know, their evil spirits that they were worshiping. The Jews, on the other hand, wouldn't have seen themselves as being slaves. The Jewish guys were thinking, no, no, the Jewish system is the law that God gave. We, we're supposed to be following that, and it's good. And Paul keeps telling them that they're slaves to that system, and I'm sure it just keeps ticking them off. But he's so mad at them that in a few minutes, he's going to tell them to do something, which is not very nice, because he wants to make this point as blatantly clear as possible. So he says, Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised, he is obligated to obey the whole law. All right, so now getting back to our Jewish rules, one of the rules, if you were a Jewish man, you had to be circumcised. And of course, the Judaizers were coming and telling the new Christians, hey, you got to be following the Jewish law. You got to follow the Jewish holidays. You got to follow the Jewish surgical procedures for men. And, and so these perfectly, you know, healthy adult men were, oh, okay, I guess I have to go for surgery. And that would put you out of commission for almost a week. And Paul was like, no, 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 no. Don't go around cutting your privates for the sake of the rules that you don't need to follow. And he says, in fact, if you are doing that, then all you're doing is just reverting to the old system which Christ came and fulfilled and is no longer necessary. And so by doing so, then Christ is of no use to you. You've just fallen back into slavery. Now, it doesn't mean they've lost their salvation, I don't think. But it does mean they lost their freedom. It does mean they lost their ability to be free in Christ to be free in life because now they've just put themselves back into a system that isn't supposed to be in play anymore. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. Fine. If you're going to do this, if you're going to go and start doing it, then you have to follow it all then. Just go back to do being completely Jewish. So a little bit of sarcasm. So again, Paul's not being very kind here. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ, for you have fallen away from grace. So, when we become a Christian, we put our faith in, the, in our Lord Jesus Christ, we put, our, we put our trust in the grace of God through faith in Lord Jesus Christ. You have accessed freedom from sin, you have accessed freedom from damnation, you have accessed freedom to live, by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to cover that at the very end. But he tells them, guys, you have gotten this grace and then you've completely moved away from it. You have received this unbelievable, unmerited favor from God, this, this gift you did not deserve, and now you've just basically decided to throw it away. And again, I don't think he's talking about salvation. I think he's talking about freedom and even sanctification. But it says, you've fallen away from the very thing, which is grace, the very thing that you got from God that you were, did not deserve in any way, shape, or form. You accepted that grace. And then after you accept the grace, you start thinking you need to do things to deserve it again. No. It's there. It's available. It's 100%. Don't undo it. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith for the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith itself. It's, it, sorry, faith expressing itself through love. So, okay, guys, really, he says, you know, this whole, if you're circumcised or uncircumcised, it actually doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. Whether you're that way or that way, it, it actually doesn't matter because, but I just don't want you to get sidetracked and take your eyes off of the faith. Take your eyes off of this amazing love that God has given to us for our salvation and turn it onto something that turns into a rules-based system that isn't supposed to be there. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. It's virtue signaling at the best and serious surgery at the worst. The only thing that counts is faith expressed itself through love. So 
why would someone, who, after they became a Christian, why would they think they need, once they know that they've been loved by God unconditionally, that he has absolutely taken away all their sin, why would they revert to thinking they had to go back to a rule system? And the only reason that they would do that, in my opinion, is because they thought they should do it, okay? They thought they should. It was, I mean, once you become a Christian, should you keep stealing? Well, no, you shouldn't. Once you become a Christian, should it you know, improve your speech and your language? Yes, it should. Once you become a Christian, uh, should it make a difference in how you do your business and how you handle your relationships? Of course it should. All those things are shoulds. So I think the church in Galatians thought, oh, this is just a should thing and we should be doing it. And the shoulds are nice because oftentimes you get a handle on that. Oh, yeah, these are things that we should be doing. But Paul recognized that in this particular case, it was undermining the gospel. And remember, you know what undermining is when the guys dig tunnels underneath where your army is and then they blow it up, right? That's undermining. When you accept the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, then revert to a rules-based system, you are undermining the gospel because it's no longer a love-based thing, okay? It's no longer based on love. It turns into something based on the law. And this is why Paul is so mad about this. All right. So, you are running a good race. We, who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? I love how he uses an obey word here. This is like a rules-based word. He said, who kept you from obeying the grace part, obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. Then the illustration, a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever may, that may be, will have to pay a penalty. So the old yeast principle is that when somebody starts spreading some bad information, somebody bad theology, bad teaching, it weasels its way through the entire congregation. It weasels, it's like yeast that just multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. And Paul says, no, we have to stop it right here, right now. This has got to stop because we're undermining the gospel. He says, but however, hey, I'm sure that we can come back to making sure that we don't take any other view. Uh, these people are cutting in on you. They're, they're throwing you into confusion. You know, just imagine, uh, you know, someone's in a race and at the last minute as they're going across the, like, uh, they're going across the finish line, somebody cuts them off and they get disqualified or they fall down and get hurt and can't finish the race. And that's the picture Paul is using here. He says, don't let these guys derail you. Don't let them take you off track by making you think you've got to follow these, this old system of rules. Now, again, in our church today, not many of us are being forced to become Jews, <laughs> but we can be forced to follow rules and regulations that we put in place. We can be forced to do things that, that we think, oh, if you're if somebody, oh, a good Christian will do this, or a good Christian doesn't. You know, those are the kinds of phrases that teach us to go back into sort of a rules-based relationship. And it derails the gospel. Okay. Maybe you time for sharing. Okay. Has anybody ever been to like a super legalistic church? Don't have to tell me where it was. Just tell me that you were in it. Okay. Was it fun? <laughs> <laughs> was there joy? It can be at times, but... What ends up happening is, is you often just start worrying more about how you're presenting yourself than you are about learning about Jesus. And, that can, and, I, and I, I've had experience myself in that, I have to admit. Now, we're going to talk about also super liberal churches, but that's not going to come up today. But we'll, that, that can also be extremely joyless as well, just FYI. Um, uh, ever go to your friend's house when you were little and a friend had a whole whack of rules that you didn't have? <laughs> And you ever go, oh, man, I'm sure glad I'm not that friend. Or maybe you were the friend that had the rules. Yeah. That could be. Matt never had the rules. <laughs> Kyle did. Yeah. No comment. Uh, you know, and it's just like, oh, am I doing something? You walk in, and all, before I know it, you're on pins and needles, right? It's like, oh, am I doing something wrong? I, I have to admit once, my, my, I had a friend like that, and and uh, their mom was extremely, extremely fastidious about the toilet seat. 
And, uh, and I had to go to the bathroom one day, and I didn't quite put it up when I peed. And then his mom came out about 10 minutes later and started chewing up my friend for peeing on the toilet seat. And I just sat there, and, yeah, I don't know, I, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got grounded and everything. Like, he got in serious trouble. So there's no way I'm admitting to that, because mom, she's going to kill you. She's going to kill you, not me. Uh, anyways, yeah, I, I did that. So anyways, but, uh, you know, you get this idea of walking on pins and needles. But when you're in a family situation, you know that you can mess up and you're still loved. You can know that you can, you can grow, and that's great. You know that, that things can be in, imperfect and still be okay. And that's the picture that God wants us to have with the church. You're part of the family. You've joined the family. Your qualification period is over. Right? By the way, what, what qualifications do you need to become a follower of Jesus Christ? Yeah, none. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What qualifications do you need to join church, to be a part of a church? Same. You don't have to get a haircut. You don't have to wear a suit. Karen will, but you don't have to. You don't have to... No, when you're a part of the family, you are a part of the family. And then, so Paul just says, no, you guys have derailed us. All right, so then he goes, okay, brothers and sisters. So he's just reminding them that, hey, this is a family thing we're talking about. And this is where he gets kind of nasty. If I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? Okay, so he's basically saying, hey, listen, guys, these legalistic guys are coming after me all the time. And so if I was actually preaching legalism, they wouldn't be bothering with me because they would agree with me. But no, they aren't because I'm teaching grace. In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Okay, So again, just a reminder, if you decide to go straight back to rules-based religion, you are no longer following Christ. And then he says these beautiful words. So when someone says, what's your favorite verse? You can say, oh, my favorite verse is Galatians 5.12. As for those agitators... I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. So, Wow. So in other words, he's referencing circumcision. So, you know, he says, if they're going to te teach that, I, I wish on them that the knife would slip. <laughs> and that would be a problem. And we've got to steer. With, uh, whatever, that would be raining. So this is, not, this is a very bad verse. But it's there for a reason. He's not putting up with this stuff. Because it's derailing the gospel. It's derailing the very heart of the message of God. All right. So let's, uh, let's just summarize a few points here. You cannot be free, and this is what he was saying when he was talking about the Jews, the Judaizers. You cannot be free if you're a slave. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, you cannot be free if you're in debt. Oddly enough, most of the people who were slaves back in these days were not slaves because they were born into it. They were slaves because they owed people money. So if you got into debt, uh, and then the person you owed the debt to collected the debt, and you said, well, I can't pay it, they had an option of either putting you in jail or making you their slave. So that was oftentimes what happened, was people became indebted and uh, ended up being slaves because of it. Uh, it had nothing to do with color. had nothing to do with, with anything else other than the fact that you were owned by somebody. But... If you're free, no, you can't be free if you're a slave. You still are under their instructions, their, it's not just being a boss, they actually own you. Yeah, you can't be free if you're trapped or chained, right? You can't be free if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're put into a corner and you have nowhere to go. And just don't do it with a badger. And here's another one. You can't be free if you're sinful, Right? You can't be free if you're trapped in sin. And so Paul reminds the Galatians, guys, if you put yourselves back under slavery, if you put yourselves back into this debt of the law, if you put yourself back into being trapped and chained by the law, you are not going to be free. You're going to lose the very freedom that Christ set you free for. You have literally got released from jail and turned around and walked right back in. But again, also a reminder, you cannot be free if you're sinful. If you are sinful, if you have not had your sins forgiven, you are not free. You cannot be free because you, you are trapped in your sin. You've heard that phrase 
many times. Well, wrapping it up then, well, what, what is freedom? So what is it then? Well, it's the ability to say yes. And it's the ability to say no. <laughs> it's both. Freedom says, hey, I can say yes to that. Oh, I can say no to that. If you are compelled to always say no, you are not free. If you're compelled to always say yes, you are not free. When I asked Michelle to marry me, if I had put a gun to her head, a real gun, and said, will you marry me, she would have been compelled to say yes, and she would not have been free. Oddly enough, I didn't have to use a gun. She still said yes. Uh, by the way, Dorothy and Orville, if you happen to be listening, happy anniversary, 70 years. I know uh, Gert and Ken had their 60th anniversary this week as well. Isn't that awesome? Uh, what wonderful pictures of love. But yeah, somewhere along the way, someone said yes. But also times, you know, you have the ability to say no. Sometimes people can't say no to stuff, right? Sometimes you're trapped in your uh, addictions or trapped in your vices or trapped in a relationship or whatever. You can't say no. And those are both ways that you have no freedom. Real freedom is I can say yes. Real freedom is I can say no. Real freedom is the ability to come and go. It's really hard to come and go if your arms are chained to a wall. Right? And the, real, the freedom is the ability to come and go, to, to move into some Jewish custom if you want, and then also to leave that Jewish custom if you want. Right? To... to, to do a holiday, and then maybe not to do a holiday. We have the ability in Christ to be free to come and go in all these circumstances. Um, Thanksgiving's next week. It's not an official church holiday, but we're celebrating ours a week early. But, you know, and for many people, certain religion holidays are their religious observance. In Christ, you're free to come to those, and you're free to not to come to those. They are no longer requirements, which... Maybe I just lost half our Christmas audience, our Christmas Eve <laughs> audience, but you know, they're not. They can't be things that you have to observe because then we're not free. And here's where we're going to leave it because this is going to lead right into the next couple weeks. It's the ability to be led by the Holy Spirit. God has given to us the Holy Spirit so that we can, be, we can walk in the Spirit. We can live the life of freedom in the Spirit. We can live a life that says, yes, today I choose to do this. Tomorrow, no, this is not what I'm going to be doing. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in charge. And the Holy Spirit always leads us in the path of freedom. Always. So that's where we're going to be heading for the next couple of weeks. <coughs> we're going to talk about the nasty things that come from sin and the wonderful things that grow by being led by the Holy Spirit. But even today, as we finish up our service, look, grab your communion, your, your cups and your bread, The wonderful thing that, that communion reminds us of is that we did not qualify for this. Okay? You did not qualify by being good. You did not qualify by observing certain rules or regulations or holidays. The only reason that you qualified to be loved by Jesus, to have his body broken for you and his blood shed for you, was because he loves you. And by us simply accepting the free gift of salvation, by us simply saying to Jesus, yes, I accept that you lived, you died, and you rose again for me, that your body was beaten and put on the cross in my place, and your blood was shed so I could have my sins forgiven because you love me. And that unconditional love that God has given to us allows us to be an unconditional member of God's family, the church, the body of Christ, the fellowship of believers. None of you qualified by giving a certain amount. Maybe we should talk about doing that, Daddy. None of you qualified by attending a certain number of times. None of you qual No, you qualify by becoming a part of our church by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you become an actual member, checkmark member, it's because you've been baptized or shared that you've been baptized and join the membership, but that's, your membership's got nothing to do with your salvation. And this is why this communion meal is not the communion meal of Community Baptist Church. This communion meal is the communion meal of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you are a follower of Jesus, please participate with us. And if you're little ones, they'll figure it out as they go. Let them join too. But the night 
Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Take it in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. And then after the meal, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Which means that we have our sins forgiven. Only God can forgive sins. And when Jesus died on the cross, he demonstrated not only was he was God, but he demonstrated that he loves you. And so we take the cup, sign of the new covenant in his blood. Our sins have been forgiven. Let's take the cup together. You know, if Jesus had done that communion meal and then gone to the cross and then that was the end of it, it wouldn't have worked. He needed to rise from the dead. He needed to live so that we could live. He needed to be resurrected so that we could be resurrected. So we're going to finish up our service with a couple of songs. I know that my Redeemer liveth, liveth, and then leaning on the everlasting arms, we can put our trust completely and totally in Jesus Christ. Let's stand together. I know that my Redeemer lived and on the earth again shall stand. I know he gives and grace and power are in his hands. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus liveth and on the earth again shall stand. I know, I know, I know, I know that life he giveth and grace and power are in his hands. I know this promise never faileth, the word he speaks, it cannot die. I know if death is night to sailor, yet I shall see him by and by. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus lives, and on the earth again shall stand. I know, I know, I know, I know that life he giveth and grace and power are in his hands. I know my mansion he prepareth the word he is there I may be. Oh, wondrous thought for I know, I know, I know, I know that life he giveth, that grace and power are in his hands. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning 
upon the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, oh yes, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, oh yes, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, oh yes, I'm leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, oh yes, I'm leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. First.